good morning Key Stage 2. I have got a very special story to read to you. It is not suitable for early years or Key Stage 1, um, but it is a tale of um, survival and I was inspired by it and I hope you will be too. Uh, there aren't many pictures, but um, here we are. I don't know if you can see that. This is about a man called Aaron Ralston and he was a canyoneer, that's an adventurer in the Grand Canyons who cut off his own arm in order to survive. Okay, <clears throat> in the wide open country of rural North America, the sport of canyoneering involves hiking through wild rocky landscapes as well as jumping, climbing, scrambling, abseiling and even swimming. Whatever it takes, in other words, to traverse the most challenging terrain the country has to offer. Aaron Ralston became a mechanical engineer after leaving university, but as a keen sportsman, he soon abandoned this career to spend more time in the mountains. I love the mountains. In particular, he had a dream to climb what Americans call the 14ers, a series of nearly 60 mountain peaks in the state of Colorado, each rising to more than 4,000 feet. Ralston planned to do it climbing alone and in the depths of winter. Probably not very sensible. One Saturday in April 2003, he was enjoying a different challenge, one that should have been a lot easier. He was spending the day travelling on foot through a remote part of Utah's beautiful Canyonlands National Park. Not for the first time he was out on his own, but that morning he made the simple but potentially fatal error of not telling anyone where he was going. Ralston figured that he would be out for no more than eight hours, but his troubles began when he attempted to climb down into a particularly narrow slot canyon. As the name suggests, this is a rock crevice much deeper than it is wide. Usually, this sort of feature forms as the result of erosion when water from a creek or stream carves its way down through the bedrock. The process takes many thousands of years, but the results can be spectacular. And Utah boasts more slot canyons than anywhere else in the world. The most impressive are wild and rocky ravines, often a hundred feet deep, but no more than three and a half feet from one side to another. Not surprisingly, they're hugely popular among hikers and mountaineers, both for their beauty and for the excitement they offer the serious climber. Tackling the one known as Blue John Canyon, Ralston was slowly descending by rope when he inadvertently dislodged a huge sandstone boulder. It had been wedged between the canyon walls, but under the force of gravity, it now suddenly shifted downwards. It didn't have far to fall, but when it came to rest, it was crushing his right hand. Worse, the boulder had pinned his arm against the unforgiving face of the rock wall and he was unable to move. The pain was intense and Ralston cried out instinctively, but in such a remote place there was no point in calling out for help. In his agony and fury he shouted and swore repeatedly, but even in his traumatised state he would have known that the chances of his voice carrying up and out of the deep narrow canyon were zero. In fact, he realised quickly that he might die there, trapped in the sheer sided rocky abyss. Blue John was miles from anywhere and no one even knew the lone hiker was missing. As far as supplies were concerned, at least he had a little water and a couple of burritos. He knew they had to be rationed, but even if he was lucky enough to be discovered, it might not be any time soon. After four days, there was no sign of help. He was still trapped and the water was all gone. No help came the following day either. And by Thursday, he had no food left. 
Despite the agonising injury to his hand, he made strenuous efforts to move the, the boulder, but it wouldn't budge, not even slightly. Weighing around 800 kilos, it was impossible to shift no matter how hard Ralston tried pushing with his feet and knees or using a kind of improvised rope cradle. Later, he tried chipping away at the boulder using a multi-tool he, he carried with him. But after many hours, it had barely made any impression on the diamond hard surface. The rock was stuck fast and so was Ralston. Now he realised he needed to consider a much more drastic solution. The reasoning was simple enough. If he couldn't move the boulder to free his arm, then he would have to remove his arm to free the rest of his body. It had been done before. Ten years previously, a fisherman in Colorado had cut off his own leg after it became tra trapped in a rockfall. And a bulldozer driver had done the same thing with a small penknife after being pinned down by a tree. Incredibly, both men had survived and done so despite the shock and considerable loss of blood. But a trained surgeon using the best equipment would still think twice before undertaking any kind of self-surgery. And Ralston was a former engineer, not a doctor. All he had was a multi-tool, which was blunted by his efforts to attack the surface of the boulder. And the knowledge that after five days stuck under the huge rock, he had no other choice but to try. Because of the damage to the multi-tool, Ralston realised he would have to use the smaller of its two blades. It was barely two inches in length and far from ideal for the job. Also, Ralston was right-handed, so using his left hand to cut would be even harder. Nevertheless, with the kind of courage that only comes in the worst situations, he began to cut into his own flesh. Even more excruciating than cutting through his flesh, however, were the nerves and the tendons. Even touching a nerve can cause electrifying pain, but actually severing one sent a bolt of lightning or superheated fire shooting up to his shoulder. In all, the operation took around an hour, each moment pure agony until suddenly the impossible was done. Ralston was free of his arm and of the immi uh, mighty immovable boulder. It was, he later said, the happiest moment of his life. Wow. He knew he was in desperately urgent need of medical attention and still a long way from home, but mentally he felt in good shape. That is amazing, isn't it? The full realisation of what he had just done seems to have given him a great sense of personal power that and knowing he was not going to die alone in the canyon. Somehow, with his one remaining arm, he managed to lower himself around 65 feet to the bottom of the narrow rock fissure. And after taking a long and overdue drink from a filthy pool of water, he began the next part of his journey home. Now, good fortune was on his side. Members of a search and rescue team were out looking for him, having found his truck several miles away. But after so long, they expected to find a body. Ralston could certainly see that he was losing blood at a very dangerous rate. But before his battered, dehydrated body gave out for good, he was lucky enough to encounter a young family. They had come thousands of miles from the Netherlands to, high, uh, sorry, to hike the canyon and what little food and drinking water they carried they gladly handed over to the distraught American. In the blistering heat the mother and son ran ahead while the father remained behind with the injured man. Two hours later and close to collapse Ralston at last heard the sound of an approaching helicopter. After many months in hospital, a series of painstaking operations, his recovery was remarkable. As park rangers labored to remove the dangerous boulder, in the end, it took 13 men. Aaron Ralston stuck by his determination to conquer the 14ers. He went back, how amazing, 
He did it too in the harsh cold of winter and became one of only three people to have accomplished it while climbing alone. I hope on that occasion that he told people where he was going, but how amazing that he didn't give up. It only spurred him on to reach his goal. And I was inspired by that because I think we all have challenges in our lives at times and people like that help us to realize that we can dig deep and find a solution to our challenges. Have a great day.